Hello everyone, this is Teacher Justina and welcome back to my channel. If you are still new, then do not forget to subscribe, like, and share, and hit the notification bell for more video updates. And do not also forget to leave your comments below and you can suggest any topics you want. And then another thing, please do not skip any content because I'm sure uh, I'll be giving uh, examples from easier moderate to difficult so i hope you will be uh you will be watching my video starting from the beginning all throughout the end okay so what is a quadratic equation a quadratic equation is any equation that can be written in the form ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero where a b and c are real numbers meaning the a the b and c are both constants and a should not be equal to zero why a should not be equal to zero because if a will be zero and then remember that any number multiplied by a zero it will give us a zero and this will no longer a quadratic equation if this will be a zero already so this form is called the standard form this is already on its standard form when can we say it is already on its standard form if ax squared as a term is the first bx as our second term and c should be always the constant and it should be always equated to zero so standard form of a quadratic equation in x or it is an equation on its second degree okay so let us familiarize what do you call the terms in quadratic equation so let us have the first one which is ax squared the ax squared is said to be the quadratic term it is where the exponent of 2 is being uh, seen so the term with an exponent of 2 in the variable so the quadratic term is the term with an exponent of 2 in the variable and then the a the a in the expression is the numerical coefficient of the quadratic term okay again the a is the numerical coefficient of the quadratic term so next what is bx as our second term this is what we call the linear term. When can we say if a term is linear? If the highest exponent of the variable is 1. So, the linear term with an exponent of 1 in the variable. And then the b in the expression is the numerical coefficient of the linear term. And then c there is said to be the constant term. So, it is the term with a fixed value or it is a number and c in the expression is already a constant okay so do not forget that uh, the ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero this is already the standard form of a quadratic equation okay so next when can we say if quadratic equation is complete or incomplete Remember that this is already our standard form of quadratic equation wherein there is the presence of the quadratic term, the linear term, and the constant term and should be equated to zero. So let us try number one. Is this complete or incomplete quadratic? So let us have the 5x squared is a quadratic term. The 5x is the linear. So what is lacking? The lacking uh, term there is the constant term. So therefore, that is incomplete. What about number two? The x squared is said to be the quadratic term because it is the term with an exponent of two. The x there is a linear term. And the 10 there is the constant. So far, the three terms are there. So this is a complete quadratic equation. Well, number three, we have the quadratic term, which is the a squared. The 2a is the linear term. The 5a is still the linear term. So far, what is lacking? So it's incomplete because lacking the constant term. Let us have number four. 
the 8 squared is the quadratic, the 7 is a constant, the 15 is still the constant term. So, there is a locking term. So, it's incomplete. So, the locking term there is the linear term. What about number 5? So, the quadratic, there is another quadratic, there is the linear, there is the constant. So, therefore, it's complete. Well, number six, we have the quadratic, we have the linear, and another linear. And so far, there is a locking term, so that is incomplete. And what is the locking term? It's the constant term. And last, there is number seven. The seven x squared is the quadratic. The eight x is linear. Well, the 19 is a constant. Thus, this is complete quadratic equation. Okay, so far, uh, we can uh, already identify as to when uh, a quadratic equation is complete or incomplete. This time, we will now transforming quadratic equation to its standard form. So, given the following equations transformed to its standard form, and that remain the A, B, and C. Remember, the A, B, and C are the real numbers. They are the numerical coefficients, the A and B, the numerical coefficients of the variable, and then the C is said to be the constant. So, let us have... The given there is 5x squared plus 5x is equal to 0. Is this already on its standard form? Remember, the standard form should be uh, on this uh, order. So, we have the 5x squared plus 5x plus 0 is equal to 0. So, if you are required by your teacher to, to have uh, the presence of the 3, the quadratic, the linear, and the constant then you have to follow instruction that you have to write it in this manner. But it's just the same thing if you will finalize your answer into this one because the zero there is insignificant, no value at all. So they are just the same thing, not unless you are instructed. Okay, let's proceed to number. Okay, so far, I'm sorry, we need to get the A, B, and the C. So our A there, the numerical coefficient of the quadratic term is 5. The B there is 5, this one, and the C there is 0. Number 2, x squared minus x is equal to negative 10. Remember that our uh, standard form, the, the 3, the A, B, and C, or the real number should be always on the left side and then the zero should be always on the right so therefore the three terms should be equated to zero and so far the negative 10 this negative 10 this is not on its place so therefore we need to transpose the negative 10 so what will happen this will become x squared minus x plus 10 already because we transpose the negative 10 to the left and then this is equal to 0 and for that our a is 1 our b is negative 1 and our c is equal to 10 well number 3 a squared plus 2a is equal to 5a again this is not yet equated to 0 we need to transpose the 5a and then it will become like this so a squared plus 2a minus 5a is equal equal to 0. So therefore, the 2a and 5a are similar terms. Thus, we need to combine them. So a squared minus 3a and then our c term there is 0 or else we can write it into this way. a squared minus 3a is equal to 0 and our a, b, and c are this. 1, negative 3, and 0. Number 4, 8 squared minus 7 is equal to negative 15. As you have seen, that the negative 7 and the negative 15 can be combined. Thus, we need to transpose the negative 15. It will become positive 15. And since they are both constant, then this will become uh, 8 squared plus the 0h plus 8. Why we have a 0h? Because remember that our second term is still containing a variable. And since there's no, uh, there's no numerical coefficient but 0 in the uh, linear term, so we have to have it a 0. So 
h where did we get the h remember it's the square root of the first term so therefore so h squared plus 0 h plus 8 is our standard form and so far it could be uh, written into this way not unless you are instructed so therefore our a b c are this 1 0 and 8 and then number 5 so far you have the k squared and you have the 5k squared and I'm sure we need to transpose all these terms all to the left. So therefore, the k squared, the 5k squared will be now negative. And then you just rewrite the negative 4k because the negative 4k, it's already on the left. But the 10 is not on its place. Thus, we need to transpose this. So therefore, are we now arranging them into quadratic linear and constant but we need to combine them the k squared minus 5k squared will gives us negative 4k squared minus 4k minus 10 because k squared minus 5k squared will gives us negative 4k squared now listen in in transforming a quadratic equation to its standard form we have to see to it that our uh first term or the quadratic term should be always positive but this time this is not a positive but it's a negative so what shall we do we need to multiply all the terms with a negative one why negative one because we just isolate there the negative the negative four so we will be changing it into positive but in a mathematical way so multiplying negative 1 to both terms so therefore negative times negative 4k squared will gives us positive 4k squared negative times negative 4k will gives us positive 4k and negative 1 times negative 10 will gives us positive 10 and any number multiplied to 0 is equal to 0 so this is already on its standard form wherein our a is 4 our b is 4 and our c is 10 okay so next we have there the x squared plus 9x plus 3x equals 0 and so far the 9x and 3x will be combined it will become 12x thus there's there's no constant term but a zero so you have their final answer x squared plus 12 x equals zero thus our a b and c are this 1 12 c and zero as our c number seven they are already on its standard form so let's proceed to number eight okay so again we have to be in mind that all these terms will be transposed to the left and this will become okay this will become the negative 8x squared plus 16x is equal to okay just rewriting them and then having them uh, on the same color because they are similar terms so what will happen what is the next step so we will be gathering the similar terms the 16x and the 3x then minus 25 so the 25 becomes negative the negative 3x becomes positive 3x and the negative 15x squared becomes positive 15x squared and how much is this the negative 8x squared plus 15x squared will gives us 7x squared while the 16 and the 3x will become 19x minus 25. So this is already on its standard form, wherein our a, b, and c are this, 7, 19, and negative 25. So let us have number 9. So as you have seen, uh, our examples are getting, uh, getting to be challenging from easier to difficult. So what shall we do? Is it possible to transform them? Yes, we need to involve uh, the, the distributive property because we need to isolate the grouping symbol there. So what is 5x squared? That will give us a product of 5x squared. 5 times 7x will give us negative 35x. Then we just rewrite the 3x squared minus 10x 
and then the negative uh, the positive 8 will be now transposed it will now become negative 8 and then so far the 5x squared and the 3x squared are similar and the negative 35x and the negative 10x are also similar terms thus we can combine them the 5x squared and the 3x squared is 8x squared minus 45x because the negative 35 and the negative 10 are having the same sign thus we can add their constants so negative 45x minus 8 and this is already on its standard form and so further a b and c are this 8 negative 45 and negative 8 and let's proceed to number 9 so number 9 we have there the 5x minus 15 and the negative 3x minus 7 so we cannot uh, directly uh, transform them not unless we will be applying the the multiplication of two binomials using the FOIL method. So the FOIL method stands for F for the first terms. So we will be getting the product of both first terms, which is 5x times negative 3x. We have negative 15x squared. O refers to the outer terms. The 5x times negative 7 will gives us negative 35x. I refers to the inner terms which is negative 15 times negative 3 will gives us positive 45x. In the L refers to the last terms, which is positive 105. This is equal to 3x, but the 3x is already, can be now transposed to negative 3x, and this will be equated to 0. And so far, what are the similar terms that can be combined? So far, the 35x, the negative 35x, the negative 3x, and the positive 45x are similar terms. And this will give us, so far, that will give us negative 35x plus negative 3x. That will give us negative 38. Negative 38x plus 45x will give us 7x. So, therefore... Negative 15x squared plus 7x plus 105 is equal to 0. Again, our, uh, this is not yet the final because our quadratic term is a negative. Thus, we need to have a multiplier of that one. We have a multiplier of negative 1 both sides. So, therefore, negative 1 times negative 15x squared will become positive 15x squared. And negative 1 times positive 7x will become negative 7x and negative 105. So our a, b, and c are 15, negative 7, and negative 105. Okay, guys, I hope this example number 10 uh, will give you the idea as to how to... Uh, how to use the different uh, previous knowledge that we have, especially in multiplying uh, polynomials, because uh, if not, you cannot uh, proceed to uh, transforming quadratic equation to its standard form. Okay. Let's proceed to example number, uh, the last example. You are given 2 fifth x squared plus 2x minus 3 is equal to 0. And then, so far, we cannot uh, uh, we cannot conclude that they are already on its standard form because we have the quadratic term, the linear, and the constant. Remember that our uh, quadratic term should be always a whole number, but there is that 2 fifth. So what shall we do? We are going to... Uh, isolate the 5 as the denominator of our quadratic term so as to have a whole number. So 5 and 5 can be cancelled or 5 divided by 5 is already 1 and 1 times 2 will give us 2x squared and then again 5 times 2 is 10 divided by 5 just the same thing so 2. 5 times 2 will give us 10x and then 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. Thus, 
multiplied as 0 by 5, it will give us a 0. So therefore, this is already on its standard form, wherein our A is 2, our B is 10, and our C is negative 15. And last, we have number 11. So this is our last example. So this time, our quadratic and linear term are both uh, involved fraction. Still, we need not to get lost because if you are just uh, have this uh, knowledge on how to isolate the denominator, then we can still obtain the standard form of the given. So again, what will be our multiply as what we our multiplier as what we have in number ten? So remember that we have a uh, five as a denominator in the quadratic and we have a three as our denominator in the linear so what shall we do what will be our multiplier is simply the lcd what is the lcd of three fifth and two thirds so the lcd is 15 and what shall we do with that 15 the 15 is our multiplier so therefore 15 times 3 is 45 and 45 divided by 5, okay, so what shall we do? 15 divided by 5, the answer is uh, 3. And then, 3 times 3, well, gives us a 9, so 9x squared. And the same process, 15 divided by 3 will be 5. And 5 times 2, well, gives us positive 10x and therefore 15 times 4 will gives us a 60 okay again 15 times 4 will gives us a 60 so this time are we done are we equating them to 0 not yet so we will be transposing the 60 to the left side so we have 9x squared plus 10x minus 60 is equal to 0. This is already on its standard form. Yes, we have the 9x squared as the quadratic, 10x is the linear, and negative 60 is the constant term. And our a, b, and c are this. 9 as our a, b is our 10, uh, b is 10, and c is negative 60. Okay, guys, I hope you really uh, understand about as to how to transform quadratic equation to standard form. You know already when can we say a quadratic equation is complete or incomplete. And you know already at the same time, you know already as to how to identify if an equation is quadratic. Guys, I hope you learned something from this video and then I hope you keep on watching because there will be more videos coming and uh, I hope you will not uh, forget to leave your comments and most of all do subscribe for more video updates. This has been Teacher Justina and thank you for watching. Goodbye everyone.